<laughs> Hello there, my name's Tom Fleming. Um, welcome to a freezing cold East London in the UK. Um, I run a research and strategy business where we work with governments and from national governments to municipalities to develop strategy and policy in the creative industries. Now this thing called the creative industries, lots of people talk about it without really digging deep to explore what it involves. Broadly, it's a policy construct. It's, it's a way of describing lots of different activities where creativity is at the, is at the core. It's, for example, it includes the arts, fashion, design, music, film, all of the things that you perhaps see as, 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 as cultural, as, 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 as nice things to have. But what actually it does by describing it, it explores how they're critical as parts of the economy. They're really important, yes, for society, but also they're really important for the economy and for community. Um, and our job in Tom Fleming Consultancy is to describe how important they are in different cities explore how they can be supported and explore how different types of value from them can be developed. Economic value, social value, cultural value. Now the reason we're standing here in East London is that this area is a place that has, has championed and supported creative industries activity for a number of years. So if you came to this part of London in the East End of London 20 odd years ago, it'd be a very different place to what you see today. Yes, it was an industrial place, and the legacy of that is still here with the old um, brewery, the old beer factory behind us. But it was a place of real transition where it was one of the poorest parts of London, it, and it has been for one of the poorest parts of London for many, many years. It was a place where most of the retail, most of the shops were, were, were closed or closing down. It was a place of, of urban degradation. There were closed factories in the textile industry, the old traditional rag trade. Um, London's docks are just um, five kilometres that way. That was all closing, decimated, um, uh, and it was really a, almost a symbol of, of economic decline um, of London, and of the UK. Now if you walk around here you'll see a city or a part of a city that is absolutely um, on the up again and the reason for that is because of the small creative businesses who moved into this area when no one else was interested in the area. Um, they, they, they saw it first of all as an opportunity to make, to have a role in, in changing a place. It was, it was affordable, it was a place where lots of them could come together at the same time. It was a place quite, which was quite evocative historically. Lots and lots of different immigrant communities had always settled here and created a really distinctive um, sense of place. And now what we have uh, oh, sorry, 20 years ago what we heard, had here was individual artists, lots of people in the visual arts, people in performing arts, very small micro businesses. What we have today are some of the biggest advertising companies in the world, some of the largest media companies, software companies. A lot of the artists are still here, although controversially some of them say they've been squeezed out, it's become too expensive for them. But what we do have though altogether is an ecology of creativity which is actually driving a wider economy, where, where through the, 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 the power of creative businesses, this area has been transformed physically, economically, but also it's, it's actually started to add value to other parts of the economy. So for example, on a Sunday, this is one of the most dynamic parts of London altogether, because there are, there are street markets selling the products and services that have been developed by the creative businesses. There's a great nighttime economy, bars, clubs, etc. In interesting restaurants. And this has been driven by the micro and then the bigger creative businesses who have been here for a generation now. So what we have in this area is an incredible festivals programme, for example. A lot of festivals have been developed from the bottom up, from the, from the creative community here, and then they're now actually playing a role on a, on a national level, in terms, or an international level, in terms of the, the, what they offer. We have, for example, the London Design Festival, which grew just down the road um, in, in, in an old warehouse in East London. And because it made sense to do that here, there were lots of design companies already here, and therefore they wanted to, to play a role in doing something together. So they developed what is now one of the biggest design festivals in the world, just um, in this part of East London. Uh, we have the, the Brick Lane Festival, which goes uh, along the, the road close to where, where I'm standing now, which is an incredible uh, um, a presentation of some of the creative talent in this area, from music through to, to visual arts to performing arts. And what I think is interesting is that unlike um, events and, and things that are, uh, are driven from the top down, with the, with the city making this, uh, trying to make this happen. These are driven from the bottom up, with the creatives taking the lead. But I think more than that, um, th th there's a, a realisation from the municipality that it's best to work in partnership with the creatives rather than to tell them what to do or to do something for them. 
they're trying to do something with them. Here is in this part of London, there used to be a development agency called the Cultural Industries Development Agency. Now this was developed to almost give a shot in the arm for the emergent creative sector. They provided specialist business support as one example. They, they, where, where they gave advice around business planning, management, finance, intellectual property. They gave, they also, as another example, did a lot of work in terms of developing networks, helping people who were young, fresh out of university, to actually meet each other, to develop relationships, trading relationships and social relationships. They also developed a role in terms of showcasing that creativity. Um, and they also developed a role in terms of advocating the role of the creative businesses to other people across the, the, this part of London and also beyond. The whole rhetoric about the creative industries has been about economics. It's been about growth. Now then, of course, we had, we had the crash. We had the economic crisis. It forced us really to reconsider the role of the creative industries and to understand um, how the sector is, uh, is operating now after the crisis in comparison to before the crisis. We're finding that certain parts of the creative industry sector really struggled. And these are the, the kind of bellwether sectors like advertising and, and, and software, things that are very much linked to and dependent on um, the financial services uh, and, and, and the, wider, the wider leisure economy. And they're much, they were much more fragile in the financial crisis. Um, but we're seeing a lot of resilience as well in other sectors, um, in design, for example, in fashion, where people sometimes in a crisis, they're more likely to think carefully about how they spend their money. And perhaps they make one relatively expensive purchase rather than lots of less expensive purchases. So we're seeing an interesting expression of, of the value of creative businesses um, in the crisis, where some are actually doing better strangely because of the crisis. What we're seeing that I think which is most significant is we're seeing a real shift in the economic structure of the creative industries where a lot of people have lost their jobs in other sectors such as financial services and they're setting up what the businesses and things they've always wanted to do now.